Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at the men who dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At 2.45 a.m. on Monday, August 6, 1945, a propeller-driven four-engine Boeing B-29 Superfortress aircraft lifted off from the unassuming island of Tinian, its destination due north. Inside, as was customary for the B-29, was a bomb. However, unlike the bombs with which the U.S. Air Force had scorched Japan for roughly a year, this bomb was not filled with the usual incendiaries. Rather than isobutyl methacrylate or its more famous kin, napalm, this bomb was packed with two masses of highly enriched uranium-235. The bomb, named Little Boy, was anything but. Snout-nosed and weighing in at 9,700 pounds, it resembled nothing more than an obese metal baseball bat. At 8.15 a.m. local time poised above Hiroshima, Little Boy dropped. 44.4 seconds later, it detonated. Roughly 60,000 people died instantly. 31,000 feet above and 10.5 miles away from them, Paul W. Tibbetts, en route to Guam, felt a 2.5G shockwave driven before a kaleidoscopic pillar of smoke and debris. He felt no regrets. Brigadier General Paul W. Tibbetts, pilot of the Enola Gay, dropper of Little Boy, recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross, Legion of Merit, Distinguished Flying Cross, Purple Heart, and four Air Medals, was born on February 23, 1915. The young Tibbetts performed his first flight at the age of 12, dispensing candy bars to a crowd at a Florida racetrack. Bitten by the flying bug, Tibbetts, in February of 1937, enlisted in the Army. His flight instruction performance at Randolph Field, San Antonio, Texas, showed him to be an above-average pilot. Upon graduating, as a second lieutenant, Tibbetts' first stint was as a personal pilot to George S. Patton, allowing him to rack up over 15,000 hours of flight time. Tibbetts ascended rapidly through the ranks, becoming a captain with his first command by 1942. In 1942, Tibbetts ran the gauntlet at Lille, flying lead in a 100-plane raid with a one-third casualty rate. Despite the seemingly heavy losses, this was seen as a qualified success, proving that the U.S. Air Force would not break under stubborn opposition. Promoted to lieutenant colonel by November of 1942, Tibbetts cut his teeth further during the war in northern Africa, flying Eisenhower to Gibraltar for Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of French North Africa. By 1943, Tibbetts had earned himself a reputation as a seasoned and senior pilot, one vouched for by Eisenhower himself. After testing the newly minted Boeing B-29 for a year, Tibbetts was recommended to Major General Uzal Ent for consideration for a special mission. In September of 1944, Tibbetts became responsible for the organization, training, and command of a secret unit called Silverplate. This was the Air Force's wing of the Manhattan Project. Tibbetts was tasked with ironing out the logistical and technical kinks, requesting modifications to bomb bay doors in order to accommodate the bulky weapon, organizing crews with photography and scientific equipment to record the events for posterity, and finally deciding that he himself would drop the atomic bomb. Upon receiving orders targeting the cities of Hiroshima, Kokura, and Nagasaki as the primary secondary and tertiary targets of the nuclear strike, Tibbetts readied his crew. At 2.15 a.m., they were airborne. The rest, well, that's history. Tibbetts, recollecting the sight of the boiling cloud in his memoirs, wrote, If Dante had been with us in the plane, he would have been terrified. Three days later, Major General Charles Sweeney dropped the bomb on Nagasaki. Sweeney was well prepared, flying five rehearsal test drops, as well as co-piloting the support and observation aircraft for the Hiroshima bombing. Nevertheless, Sweeney's flight performance on August the 9th had none of the aplomb that Tibbetts had displayed. First, the night before, Sweeney's B-29, named Boxcar, had malfunctioned, with the reserve fuel bladder failing to pump. Running on 600 gallons less fuel than expected, Sweeney nevertheless decided to go, intending to rendezvous with his two escort aircraft at 30,000 feet near the island of Yakushima. This would be a very fuel-intensive task at that height. Due to confusion in the rendezvous, for which Sweeney would be reprimanded later, valuable time was lost. The crew finally reached Kokura, only to find it partially obscured, which was problematic given the clear directives to conduct a visual rather than radar bombing. After two unsuccessful flyovers and running low on fuel, Sweeney opted for his second target, Nagasaki. 
Sweeney's bad luck, well, that was Kokura's good. Indeed, so much so that the phrase Kokura luck has entered into the Japanese lexicon. With desperately little fuel left and heavy cloud cover over Nagasaki, Sweeney decided to drop Fat Man by radar, despite his orders to the contrary. The resulting 1.5 mile inaccuracy spared Nagasaki a great deal of damage, with the surrounding hills intercepting much of the blast. With only 60% of Nagasaki destroyed and two engines kaput from fuel exhaustion, Sweeney made a rough landing in Okinawa. Okinawa, with just seven gallons of fuel remaining. To say Tibbets was unamused by Sweeney's near failure would be an understatement. However, the close shave success was sufficient to ensure that no action would be taken against Sweeney. Post Nagasaki, both men have been unshakable in defending the dropping of the bombs as right and proper. Tibbets remains convinced that we saved more lives than we took, and concludes it would have been morally wrong if we'd had that weapon and not used it, and we let a million more people die. Sweeney, in his memoirs made similar assertions, but drew fire for factual inaccuracies in his account of events. Indeed, so indignant was Tibbets at Sweeney's account that Tibbets added a chapter to his own memoirs in which he vented his displeasure at Sweeney's command of the bombing. Sweeney died at the age of 84 on July 16, 2004 at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Tibbets died at the age of 92 in 2007 in his Columbus, Ohio home. And now for a bonus fact. Paul Tibbets claims in his memoirs that the codename Fat Man referred to Winston Churchill, but Robert Serber, who worked on the design project and actually named the bombs, claims in his memoirs that it was named after Caspar Gutmann. Gutmann was the fat man in the film The Maltese Falcon. Despite this, Serber has also been recorded to have said that the name simply came from the size and shapes of the bombs. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you're looking for something to expand on this topic, we'd like to recommend a book. It's called The Three Musketeers of the Army Air Forces, from Hitler's Fortress Europa to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Loads more details than what we talked about in today's video. You'll find a link in the description below. I'd also like to take this moment to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out making these daily videos and get loads of great perks in return, like monthly graphics, uh, then please do consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash today I found out. And as always, thank you for watching.